Hey there, y'all. Today we're going to look at 3.3 on multiplying polynomials. In this section, you're going to be able to multiply a polynomial by a monomial and multiply a polynomial by another polynomial. And this falls under two of the three standards we've been looking at for most of this unit so far, being able to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials and understand that they're closed under these operations, and then interpret their meanings of coefficients and factors and terms and expressions based on real world context. And so we're going to look at some examples here today on those multiplications. And so first we're going to talk about what it means to multiply polynomials. And so looking at that, when we multiply polynomials, we have to remember the distributive property. And so remember the distributive property says if I have a, and a could be a number, it could be a variable, it could be anything out there, being multiplied into something that has addition or subtraction in it, so multiple terms, then that a will multiply to both the b and the c, or if there's three terms there, to the a, the b, and, or the b, the c, and the d. And so we could use distributed property to distribute this value over all of it. So let's look at some examples of multiplying a polynomial by a monomial. So let's go ahead and look at those. So in example 1a, we've got four parentheses, and that means we're multiplying x plus 5. And so the 4 is going to multiply to both the x and to the 5. And so when it's just a simple distribution, we can just kind of show these little rainbows. And so 4 times x, well, they're not the same term, so we just write them together, 4x. And 4 times 5 is 20, so plus 20. Another way that we might show this, and again, this is leading towards what we're going to use later on, is the box method. And so I'm going to put the x plus 5 up here, and I'm going to put the 4 here. And so if I multiply in, kind of like Battleship, right? So you line things with rows and columns. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 5 is 20. So this is 4x plus 20. And so either way, we get the same answer. And so we're going to look at a couple more examples of multiplying polynomials by monomials. In example B, we've got negative 5 times 3x minus 4. And so we're distributing the negative 5. And so negative 5 times 3x is negative 15x. And negative 5 times negative 4 is positive, negative times negative, 20. And again, we can use that box method if you so want to. And again, we're going to use it here in a minute for more complicated problems. 3x minus 4 times the negative 5, 3x times the negative 5, negative 15x, negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20, so negative 15x plus 20. And again, either method will get us there. It's your choice on which method you want to use. As we get to more complicated problems, the box method will be the method that will keep things more organized than using like the little rainbows because it will get a lot of rainbows and it will be ugly. All right, let's look at example C. This one's a little bit different. Now we've got 7x outside. And so we're not just multiplying by a number, but we've got a monomial here that has a variable involved. And then we've got a trinomial here. So 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. Again, we can distribute this in to all the terms. It goes to all three terms. And so this one's coming out here. 7 times 2 is 14 x times x squared, so that's x cubed. 7 times negative 5 is negative 35. x times x, so that's 2x's, so x squared. Then 7x times 6, so that's going to be plus 42. And we just have the single x, so it's there. Again, we could use the box. And so 2x squared, negative 5x and then plus 6 times the 7x. So multiplying this through, we're going to get 14, because 2 times 7, x squared times x, so that's x cubed. Negative 5 times 7 is negative 35. x times x is x squared. 6 times 7 is 42, and we've got the x with it. And so 14x cubed minus 35x squared plus 42x. Again, either way will get us that answer in the end. 
personal preference on how you want to do those if you want to work out the box to organize this work or not. All right, let's go ahead and look at some multiplying of polynomials together. And so when we multiply two polynomials together, we have to distribute all the terms of the first polynomial to all the terms of the second polynomial. And so it'll look like this. A plus B times C plus D is equal to AC, so that's the A times the C. And then AD, so that's the A times the D. And then we've got the B times the C, BC. And then the B times the D, BD. And so we see how everything in the first got multiplied to everything in the second. Another way we could look at this is with that box method. And so we can draw our box. And so we have A plus B times C plus D. And multiplying it in, A times C, AC. B times C, BC. A times D is AD. And B times D is BD. And we see all four of those terms, the AC, the BC, the AD, and the BD in the final answer as we add all this together. AC plus AD plus BC plus BD. Okay. And remember that the order of addition is commutative, so we can switch the order of things as we need to um, for like terms to be combined, things like that. So let's look at a few examples of how we multiply binomials. In example 2a, we've got x plus 3 times x plus 5. Again, you can do the rainbows if you want. x times x is x squared. And then we can do x times the positive 5, so that's plus 5x. And then we can do the 3 times the x, so that's plus 3x. And we can do the 3 times the 5, so that's plus 15. We do have some like terms to combine, and so we'll combine those at this point. x squared, we've got 3x and 5x, so that's 8x, plus 15. So that's the simplified answer. Again, if we want to do the box, we can do the box. And so we've got x plus 3, x plus 5. And so x times x is x squared. 3 times x is 3x x times 5 is 5x, and 3 times 5 is 15. And we're going to see there's a couple of like terms in the middle here. We've got the 3x and the 5x. Those will add together, and so we get x squared plus 8x plus 15 as our final answer. So again, either method works. And I'll actually show you a third method here. We can actually multiply vertically. Again, you think about multiplying like multi-digit multi numbers. We can do the same method here. And so doing the same problem a third way, x plus 3 times x plus 5, and we just multiply terms like we multiply digits. 3 times 5 is 15. Don't forget your plus sign. 5 times x, 5x. We go down to the next line. And again, we're going to line up where these like terms go. x times 3 is 3x, and x times x is x squared. We can add all that together like we're, we used to do with just regular large multiplication and get x squared plus 8x plus 15. And so it doesn't matter which method you choose to use. It will give you the same result as long as you do all the correct multiplication. Again, with larger problems, we want a way to organize the work better, and that's why I would recommend the box. Um, because it is useful in organizing your work, and you can quickly see if you make a mistake in an individual box. Be like, oh, I've got a sign wrong, or oh, I mismultiplied this and did 3 plus 2 instead of 3 times 2. And so we can see those mistakes quickly through the box method. All right, let's go ahead and look at example 2b. x minus 4 and x plus 7. And so for the rest of these, I'm going to just use one method, and that is the box method. Again, if you want to do the rainbows, that's great. If you want to do it vertically, you can do that as well, but I'm going to do the box method to show it on the rest of these examples. And so x minus 4 times x plus 7. And so we've got our box made, and so we'll multiply through. x times x is x squared. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. 
x times 7 is 7x, and negative 4 times positive 7 is a negative 28. We look at our like terms, we've got a negative 4x and a positive 7x. And so the x squared comes out, the minus 28 will be on the back. But 7x minus 4x is a positive 3x. And so we get x squared plus 3x minus 28. All right. So again, we use the box, we can organize it quickly, and there's our result. Let's look at C. 2x minus 1 times 3x minus 4. So again, we'll set up our box. 2x minus 1, 3x minus 4. And so 2x times 3x, so 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. Negative 1 times 3x, so that's just negative 3x. 2x times negative 4, so that's negative 8x. And negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4. Again, we look for any like terms that we've got in the boxes. And so we've got a negative 3x and a negative 8x. Anything that's not highlighted will just come outside as part of the final answer. So 6x squared. Negative 3 and negative 8 is negative 11x plus the 4. And so our final result is there. Again, use a method that works best for you. Again, I highly recommend the box method as it is the cleanest when it comes to sorting your work and knowing what pieces that you've got. All right, so the last thing we're gonna look at is example three, and that is multiplying polynomials where they're not just binomials. And again, if you go back to the standard, the standard is just to be able to do quadratics. And so example two is the line here on that. But example three just takes this process a step further. And again, it's something that as we look at intermediate algebra and going to algebra two, it's a skill that is useful. You need to be able to multiply higher order polynomials. And again, in intermediate, that is a part of taking that standard just a little bit further. And so we look at x minus 5 times x squared plus 3x minus 7. And so again, we're going to set our box. Whichever way you want to write these two polynomials is your prerogative. Because remember, multiplication is commutative. So I can do the first times the second or second times the first. I like writing the longer one on top and the shorter one along the side just because I like using my space that way. Um, but if you want to write the first one on top and the second one down the side, that's perfectly fine as well. It, remember multiplication, a times b is b times a. So x squared times x, that's x cubed. 3x times x, that's 3 x squared. Negative 7 times x is negative 7x. x squared times negative 5 is negative 5x squared. 3x times negative 5, so negative 15x. And negative 7 times negative 5 is a positive 35. Again, we look for our like terms here. Remember that it has to have the same variable and the same exponent. So I've got an x squared and an x squared. Those will add together. And then I've also got an x and an x. So those two will add together. And then I've got two terms that do not have anybody to pair up with. So the x cubed comes out front. The plus 35 is all by its lonesome in the back because we're going from highest degree to lowest degree. And so negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2x squared. And negative 7 and negative 15 is negative 22x. And so we get x cubed minus 2x squared, minus 22x, plus 35. All right, let's look at the last example here. And this is a trinomial times a trinomial. Again, if you can do one of these, you can do any of these. And again, if you use the box method, it'll keep you organized. You'll be able to see your like terms quickly, and, and you won't make as many mistakes, OK? So let's write out our box. x squared minus 4x minus 5. Again, get your box going here. And we're going to be a 3 by 3 here because of what we are multiplying by. And so along the side, 2x squared plus 6x minus 7. And so what are we going to multiply together here? we got nine boxes to fill. x squared times 2x squared. That is 2x 
to the fourth. Negative 4x times 2x squared, negative 8x cubed. Negative 5x times 2x squared, so that's going to be a negative 10x squared. We go down to line 2. x squared times 6x, so that's 6x cubed, because 2 and 1 gives us 3. Negative 4x times the 6x, so that's going to be a negative 24x squared. And then negative 5 times a positive 6x, that's negative 30x. Line 3, we got x squared times negative 7, so negative 7x squared. Negative 4x times negative 7, so that's a positive 28x. And then negative 5 times negative 7 is a positive 35. Combining all our like terms will get us our final answer, so we're going to highlight those first. I've got an x cubed and an x cubed, so those two will go together. And then I've got a negative 10x squared, a negative 24x squared, and a negative 7x squared. All those will combine together. And finally, we've got a negative 30x and a positive 28x. Now, one thing I want to just point out here is we see that these colors are kind of going in diagonals, and a lot of times they will. But they will not always go in the diagonal like this because we might be missing a term somewhere. And, and so we get a term that doesn't up, show up. And so our diagonals will not always line up perfectly. And that's okay. We're just looking for like terms. We're going to add them all together. And so this final answer, we got the 2x to the fourth. Negative 8 and positive 6 is negative 2x cubed. Negative 10 and negative 7 is negative 17. And negative 24 given to that is a negative 41x squared. Negative 30 and positive 28 is negative 2x. And then the plus 35 on the end. And so we get 2x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 41x squared minus 2x plus 35. So again, here we're able to multiply this together. Use the box method to your advantage. And that is it for this lesson. So if you got any questions, let me know but I'll catch y'all next time.